In this video, we will see how we can produce a 360 photo in 3ds Max and V-Ray in order to make a virtual tour. The process is fairly simple and I'm sure you will love the final result. So, let's start. Go to your 3ds Max file. It doesn't really make a difference on which file you will open from the ones I have given to you. When I want to do a virtual tour, I usually place my camera at the center of the room. Why is that? Because we are about to do a 360 degrees rotation, so for me it's best when I stand at the center of the room and I equally see the various distances around me. We can either set the camera from scratch or we can just select this one and push it to the center. Let's say here. Let me also elevate it a bit. Don't worry that we basically can't see the full bedroom. In the virtual tour, we will be able to scroll around and see the whole room. Once we have set the camera, we need to go to the render setup dialog box. Go to the V-Ray tab and to the camera rollout. At the type field, select spherical Enable Override Field of View and type 360 instead of 45. Moreover, it's very important that we need to go to the Common tab and adjust the resolution. Go to the Output Size and we need to set a ratio of 2 and enable the lock. I usually set the resolution to 8000 pixels width, so this will take quite a lot of time to render, but if you use lower resolution, then I'm afraid your virtual tour will look blurry. But of course, first you need to do some test virtual tours to confirm that your camera angle is correct, your geometry is correct and so on, so in these cases I first do my tests at 2000 pixels. When we hit the render button, the render will look like this. So this is a 360 render. And that's the final result we get for this scene in 2000 pixels. Now that we have produced the 360 panorama photo, the next step is to find a software to review it. Personally, I use 3D Vista, which is a rather expensive software if you don't produce virtual tours on a regular basis. In 3D Vista, click to create a new project, select the basic template, choose import panorama, and the standard panorama and go to the folder that you saved the 360 render. Now let's hit the preview button at the bottom right corner. Give it some time and here it is. It's super blurry, but that's because, as I said at the very beginning, 2000 pixels is not enough for a virtual tour. We need to render at approximately 8000 pixels, but for our testing it's ok. As you can see, the virtual tour rotates automatically, but we can take control of the navigation using the cursor. So now that everything looks good to me, I can go back and set the resolution to 8000 pixels. Let's save this render as Virtual Tool 01.
and let's set one more camera in the bathroom. Let's render this one as well. And let's save this as virtualtour02.jpg. Let's go back to 3D Vista. Let's select and delete the old rendering of the 2000 pixels and let's load the two new 360 renders. If we click on Preview, only the first image loads. Even if we select this one and click Preview, we still can't see it, only the first in this list loads. So how can we see both and most importantly, how can we go from one room to another? Go to the Publish tab and here you can push them around. So if we push this one first, then when we click the Preview button, this one loads. Now, go to the menu Panoramas and click on Hotspots. Go to the top right corner and choose Image. We see here a variety of icons. Pick the one you like, let's say this one, and click outside the bathroom to place it. Select the image, click on Add Action, choose Open Panorama and select the bathroom render. Press Done. Now, from the Panoramas list, select the bathroom render and repeat the steps. Let's hit Preview. So now we see the arrow we placed and if we click on it, we enter the bathroom. Likewise, here is the other arrow that allows us to return back to the bedroom. Isn't this fun? Once you finish, click on the Publish tab. I personally choose for web.
give it some time to generate it. And then go to My Tools, click on Upload, and once it finishes, here is the link. This is what you need to share with your clients. Copy the link and go to a web browser, paste it, and here is your virtual tour. So, the main reason I prefer 3D Vista is because it offers a lot of options to make your job look more professional. But as I said at the very beginning, it's quite an expensive software to use if you're not doing this just for fun and you're not being paid for your VTs. Apart from 3D Vista, there are free softwares that you can use, like Kula or RoundMe. That's all on the 360 virtual tours. So please do some testing here and I can't wait for you to share with me the virtual tours you will produce.